Chapter 10 The next day, Nick and I waited at home while Mom picks up my relatives at the airport. She doesn't take us because she says we'll get bored at the airport. Because my relatives are coming in from a different country, they have to go through customs, which is where they check you to make sure you are not bringing any illegal goods into the country. It can take a really long time. This trip is only Mom's sister, my tia, Juanis, and my abuelo, Apolinar. I haven't seen them in two years, so I'm a little nervous. Abuela rarely comes because she's very particular and doesn't like traveling anymore. She'd rather just stay home, stay at home playing cards. It would be easier if it were my tia Margarita visiting. She comes more often because she travels the world all the time and sometimes stays over in Chicago for a day or two in between her trips. Of all my relatives, she speaks English the best, so I like talking to her the most. She also is very creative, a professor, and speaks four languages. I want to be as smart as her when I grow up. While she's gone, Mom puts Nick in charge of watching the turkey. My job is to set the table. I know that's because I have an artistic eye. Nick doesn't know how to fold the napkins into triangles like they do in the fancy restaurants on TV. I even make little name tags in the shape of a turkey for everyone's seat. For a while, the house is quiet and I'm able to draw. Part of me wants to hide in a bed with a book instead of doing Thanksgiving. I feel anxious, almost like it is the first day of school again. But before I can go hide, I hear the front door. Hola, mi amor, says Juanis in a loud voice. She swallows me up in a big hug and kisses both my cheeks. I can't see anything because of her fuzzy sweater, but I can smell her perfume. Juanis wears a lot of makeup. That's different from mom, who only wears a little makeup when she goes to work. Juanis pulls away from me, then goes to Nick. I can finally see that she's wearing a crazy patterned sweater and leggings. Her short red hair looks wilder than I have ever seen it. Hola, que guapo, she says as Nick beams. He likes being called good looking. Juanis gets along really well with Nick. She used to take care of him after school when we lived in Mexico City. I sit on the couch and draw while Nick talks to Juanis in Spanish. I don't get a chance to talk to my family as much. To them, I am just the artista who makes drawings. They don't really know me like they know Nick. He was in first grade when we left, while I was just a baby. They don't know what questions to ask me, like what is my favorite fish or my favorite book. And even if they did, I wouldn't know how to tell them in Spanish, so I let them talk without me. Abuela walks in with mom. Excuse me. Abuela walks in next with mom. He talks a little slow because he has a limp from losing one of his legs in a bus accident when he was my age. He manages to get around everywhere thanks to his wooden leg, but he never complains about it. Even when he takes his wooden leg off at night, he whistles as he hops into bed. Hola, que preciosa esta Stella, Abuelo says. When he calls me pretty, I have to admit, I feel a little less weird. He puts down his guitar and laughs, a big belly laugh, as he hugs me with both arms. Abuelo sniffs the air. Donde esta la comida, Nick? Abuelo is obviously hungry as he hugs Nick. Casi, says mom, which means the food is almost ready. She takes Abuelo's bag and guitar to Nick's room. Abuelo always brings his guitar when he visits. He used to be a performer in Mexico, playing on a radio program. We freshen up real quick, and I also feed Poncho. Happy Thanksgiving, I say, as I drop an extra food pellet. Then Mom says, Esta listo, announcing that the food is ready. Everyone sits down at the table as Mom brings out the dishes. There's turkey, cornbread stuffing, mashed potatoes, and roasted vegetables. We even have sweet potatoes with marshmallows. Mom says she saw the recipe in a cookbook, but I think it's weird. My favorite things to eat are the dishes that are not American. We make this stuffing called picadillo, which is ground meat with aceitunas. The olives make it feel special, like it's our own treat. Mom also makes elote, corn on the cob, with crumbled Mexican cheese on top. I want to dig in, but Mom says we have to say what we are grateful for first. Everyone says a few things in Spanish. When it comes to my turn, I just say very quietly, mi familia. I feel as shy as I do when I'm at school, but this is different. At school, I'm only shy about saying the words right, but here around my family, 
I just don't have the words to say everything I want to say. If I could have said what I'm grateful for in English, I would have easily gone on and on. There's so much, like all the sea creatures in the sea. Mom, Nick, and Jenny, my best friend. But I can't. Not in Spanish. I do try sometimes. But when I try to speak Spanish, Juanes will finish my sentences for me. Like when I say, quiero, I say, looking at the picadillo. Mas pavo, says Juanes, who starts putting more turkey on my plate, which is not at all what I wanted. I push my turkey around with my fork. It's hard to want to talk when people aren't even listening to you. We eat until we are stuffed like pavos. Mom decides to look at a photo albums before dessert. Vamos a mirar fotos de la familia. It's funny to see pictures from before I was born. Everyone is wearing different looking clothes, not to mention their different hairstyles. Both mom and dad had long hair. Nick had blonde hair instead of the dark brown hair he has now. There are even pictures of dad with his family and mom's family. Nick points to a picture. He is hitting a piñata with dad, abuelo, and my dad's brother, Carlos. I remember that. That was when I turned four years old, he says. And these are the puppets I had at my birthday party. He points to this picture with these amazing wooden, wooden puppets. Mom, Juanes, and Abuelo nod. Nick remembers so much. On another page, I see another picture of Abuelo, Tio, Carlos, and a woman I don't know toasting. Mom, who is that, I ask. Oh, that's your Abuela, Carmen, on your dad's side. Her hair is a little different there. That's probably why you, do, you didn't recognize her. I've only seen dad's parents once since we've moved to the United States. While the grown-ups talk, I ask Nick, is Tio Carlos nice? He is, or at least he was back then. He'd play football with me and dad. I sort of remember seeing my Tio. He used to live near us. We'd see him regularly until my parents divorced. Then we stopped seeing him and he moved to Colorado. Mom flicks, flips to pictures of when I was born. These are my favorite. I like seeing the pictures of me with tiny little bows in my hair. Everyone agrees that I was one. I was the cutest baby. There are also photos of everyone holding me, including Nick. He leans over and messes up my hair. La bebé, Juanis says. She touches my arm and gives me a kiss on the cheek. She immediately wipes the pink lipstick stick off my cheek and grabs my chin. Tu sabes que soy tu segunda madre, Stella, Juanis says. Sometimes she likes to tell me she's my second mother. I nod my head. See, Juanes might not always listen, but I know she loves me. After we've given our stomachs a break, we eat three different kinds of pie, apple, pecan, and pumpkin. I show Juanes and Abuelo my drawings of the animal project while we eat. Que bueno, Abuelo says. They are really good. He especially likes my manatee. Nick then begs Abuelo to play the guitar, and he begins to play many songs I know. I love singing along, but sometimes I stay quiet to watch mom sing. She looks so happy singing with her dad. Mom looks at me. You know, when I was your age, your abuelos would have these amazing parties. Abuelo and all his musician friends would sing all night. But what about your bedtime? Mom laughs. She translates what I said to Abuelo and Juanis, and it makes them laugh too. Ay, Stella says Abuelo. I tap mom's arm. Why is that funny? Mom sees that my eyebrows are raised up. Don't worry, mi chiquita. It was just cute. Things are a little different in Mexico. Families throw more parties, and people are a little less strict with bedtimes. I wouldn't mind that, said Nick. I don't say anything. Part of me wishes we never left Mexico. Sure, the parties and less strict bedtimes would be great, but I also think things would have been easier. We would see each other all the time instead of once every other year. If I lived near them, then they would feel like my family and not like visitors or just like mom's or Nick's family. Mom also wouldn't have to do everything by herself and we wouldn't be alone anymore. Abuelo starts singing my favorite song, El Corredo de Chihuahua, and motions to me with his guitar. I know all the words, so I start singing along too. Mom stands up. She pulls, pulls me to the floor to dance with her and twirls me until I start giggling. She finally stops twirling me, and everything keeps spinning for a second. When I can finally see straight, I notice that my whole family is giggling with me too, even Nick. I'm really happy that giggling and smiling is something that doesn't have to be translated. You just know it when you see it.